The Plan Air Easton podcast is brought to you by the Avalon Foundation, enriching the lives of those on the eastern shore of Maryland through the arts. Visit avalonfoundation.org for details on events, performances, and educational programming offered throughout the year. The first day when we were waiting um, uh, to, to go into for the, the information session, I ran into John Brandon Sills, and he was so lovely. And then I went back and I uh, that, that evening and I turned on the podcast with him. It was, first of all, enlightening to hear him. And then to, you know, here I had been in awe, awestruck. And then I saw, you know, listened to him talk on the podcast and, and all of his concerns. And it was just so fascinating, you know, to come back and talk to him, uh, you know, after that and say, I listened to your podcast last night. And boy, that's just a lot of the same stuff I was thinking of. So it was really cool. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Plenary Eastern Podcast. I'm Tim Wigan here with... Marie Nuttall. <laughs> That's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and this is your morning drive. <laughs> uh, Marie, um, so great guest this, today. Uh, she was really wonderful to talk to. And just another... I just find it's a very fresh take on the world of art and her life. And Marilyn was really cool. Yep. Yep, you have to give a listen. It um, it gets fun. <laughs> it gets fun as it, as it goes on. Yeah, but she says she's a lot fascinating. Of she says a lot of different things that you know we haven't heard about art. Um, we talk about 1970s New York City um, art exhibit that was out there at one point that became a controversial subject. We talk about um, a great idea for a new T-shirt <laughs> and. Marilyn sort of leads the way. Yes, she does. Yes, she does. Give a listen, Marilyn Rose. Marilyn, do you remember Tim? Sure. I don't, you don't, uh, no. I hear the voice. No, yeah, I don't, yeah. I, I, I don't know that we met in person. I, I see a microphone. But uh, I remember the voice and I saw you around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. I, that's. I wish I could say the same, Marilyn. I have, I've never seen your face before. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't really there. It was just an illusion. Right? Tim gets very much in the zone, so he yeah, right. he, yeah, he has a true. job during plein air, and he is focused on that completely. No, <laughs> yeah. it's just, right. I, now, where where are you from, Marilyn? New Jersey. New Jersey. Well, I, I grew up in Chicago. Uh, nice. You could hear that Chicago. <laughs> I, I grew up in Chicago, and uh, but I've been in uh, New York area now for uh, I hate to say how long forty years, something like that. Where yeah. where where uh, where New Jersey? You say New Jersey or New York? You just... Uh, New York area, New Jersey, West Caldwell. I, I'm, you know, com- it's a. So you don't even call your <laughs> town New Jersey. You call yourself the New York no, area, I, and you live I, in New Jersey. Is that right? <laughs> No, I, I do. I just want to discredit. No, I don't want to diss New Jersey. It's just that <laughs> you uh, just did. <laughs> stand when they say New Jersey, they're always like, "What exit?" And and I'm like, "No, we're in the part of New Jersey where most people attach themselves to the city." But I didn't move to New Jersey. I moved to New York when and, I and you've been there Chicago. forty years. So, well, that... I was in New York, and then I I crept out a little bit to right. Jersey. Yeah. And how did you like Easton? Easton was amazing. First of all, the hospitality was great. The weather sucked, but I'm sorry, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> but but like truly, but, Marilyn, your your weather is not that much different in New Jersey, right? I mean, or are we be. are we like warmer and or how how well, how is I Easton think, different from New Jersey? I think it's it's more humid, and I just think that you know I'm not outside all day every day for for twelve hours a day in Got that it. heat. You know that week, <laughs> right? But other than that, right? So, where did yeah. you paint, Marilyn? Do you know, where, where? uh, and where didn't I paint? I put a lot of miles on my car. Um, I painted in St. Michael's. I painted in Tillman. I painted in Oxford. Um, I painted at. Uh, I found it really helpful. Some of the lists that you gave of places. Oh right. Uh, I painted at. Oh, I wish I could remember the names of the places, but some beautiful private um, properties. estates, mm-hmm. private properties. And uh, yeah, it it was a little of a 
challenge for me because a lot of what I've been doing, I do plein air and then the other kind of piece you can see behind me, um, I do a lot of urban stuff. So um, it was interesting because, uh, you know, to find kind of my pace in this beautiful bucolic uh, landscape. <laughs> but um, right. yeah, yeah, I painted sure. everything. Yeah, it it, uh, it can take folks a while to get their momentum going for sure. Um, how many right. times did you apply, Marilyn? Uh, I can't count. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I can't say I, I applied every year, but I'm I'm thinking I applied seven or eight times. Oh, wow. And, uh, so yeah, you, it I mean, really was years, your year. Oh, it was my year. It was my year. And what it is, was what so did exciting. Did she get every, did you, she win everything? She was the first timer. First time. Yeah, no, right. I was the first timer. I didn't win anything, but I sold a lot of work. I sold 11 paintings, I think. Oh, wow. congratulations. And that was amazing experience. You know, I just felt like I connected with the people and and the the place and the experience and um, you know, again, the the aura of plein air Easton is a little intimidating. And so then, you know, kind of when you settle back and for me, I find my, my groove. Right. right. But I stumbled into the plein air, um, scene, uh, a while ago. I've, I've done, um, Wayne, I've done Annapolis repeatedly. I've done Wayne repeatedly. Mm -hmm. Um, I've done Billsboro and Vermont and I've done a lot of others, but, um, I come from a graphic design background. Okay. So uh, I studied drawing and painting in, in college. And uh, at the time I went to Washington University in St. Louis and they had a, a really, really fine, fine art department. But it was a lot of abstract expressionist, you know, and, and representational, blah, representational painting was not, um, it was frowned upon in some way. We had a real oh. strong foundation, figure painting and all that. So, but then when you got to your studio work, it was a free for all in terms of uh, what you did. And uh, representational painting and plein air was not ever thought of. And watercolor was totally looked down upon. I'd never touched watercolor. I did big four foot by six foot oil paintings. And um, I knew I wanted to become a graphic designer and I was gonna go into graphic design department. And at some point I decided uh, that this would be my opportunity. I had gotten a, a fellowship, it was an amazing fellowship and they paid my ride. So I got to work um, on the, uh, I got to paint for, for four years, you know, so I decided I was gonna paint and not do graphic design at that point. But mm -hmm. when I left school, I decided I was, um, I didn't want, I didn't love art enough to wait tables. So I ended up uh, going, oh, that's, I, you know, that's, I, that's a great t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great t-shirt. It wasn't, you know, I didn't feel like I had that passion about it. And, and so I um, worked as a graphic designer and uh, I kind of interned and I found my way. I came to New York on a visit for the summer and I ended up staying and um, and I fell in love and I with the city and I did graphic design and I didn't pick up a paintbrush I, I, besides maybe taking a course or two in illustration at School of Visual Arts and deciding that, well, it wasn't for me. Mm -hmm. And um, I didn't paint for 20 years. And wow. then some point I just felt a calling that I had to I, I have on my studio wall across the room I have this big four foot by six foot abstract watercolor uh not watercolor uh oil painting and I just decided I needed to see it again it was in Chicago and I had it shipped out and I said I've got to somehow make art in my life and I started uh taking a watercolor class because a friend was giving a watercolor class and watercolor had been totally poo-pooed at, at WashU and my colors are really bold and I don't use watercolor the way other people necessarily do mm -hmm. so I um, uh, but I, I took this class and I fell in love with the medium I mean that was just for me I learned I've learned more about life from watercolor than you know, I don't know which informs my life, watercolor informs my life, or my life informs my watercolors. And that. and so I started painting. And I met uh, I, I, I met someone at a figure session uh, who, Stephanie Amato, and I think she's done Plein Air Easton. Yes. But at the time she was telling me about Plein Air in New Jersey, and I did a few, you know, Plein Air 
not events, but meetup kind of things. Mm -hmm. And then she said something about this plenary scene, and I knew nothing about it. And I applied, unbeknownst to me, I think this was in 2013 or 12, I applied to a lot of them, and I got into some of the big guys. I got into plenary um, uh, in Wayne, mm -hmm. and I actually won an award there that year, my first year. And I got into... Uh, I, I painted in Chesterton and I painted in Vermont. I, I didn't know, and I didn't know what this was about. And I was exhausted at the end because oh, I had one going like yes. every week for done this. But I met um, Michelle Byrne and I met Ken Harlick and I'm like, this is, I was bitten. Yeah. So uh, right. the next year, I think I- Marilyn, can we go back a second real quick? Sure. Before we go to history? I just want to ask, um, when you say, did, did you, when you say, uh, I wasn't, I didn't love art enough to wait tables or, where, I, I, or right. however you phrased it. Did you end up making your money? Did you, did you uh, get secure? Oh, as a graphic designer? Yes. Yeah. I, I ended up as a graphic designer being able to, you know, work full time. Um, and I had my own business. You were, you and, made money. You did all of the, could you have painted had you had that worry on your mind? Did you have no? I okay. Go ahead. I, and I had li and and I also had little kids after that. You know, I I I never stopped working, but I I had children and and my creative energy I think was going into my work because my work was creative in sense and into my my family, mm -hmm. and and it it was my identity very strongly that I needed to be independent financially. Uh, not financially independent sounds pretty grandiose, but I needed to be able to make my way in the world, of course. you know, and, uh, and, and that was important to me. And then, um, later, you know, I found room for the art right. and, and this time I felt like I have to do it, you know, with that passion that I didn't feel as, as a young person, I felt like I wanted to paint, but I didn't have the content and, and I didn't understand at the time that the content um, you know, cause I went to school in the seventies and we, you know, it was all conceptual art and what does it mean? And I didn't have this meaning cause I felt I hadn't lived life. And, and then I started to understand that the content didn't have to be something abstract. I mean, that, that you can have content, very strong content in your, uh, in representational painting, right? Mm -hmm. The content isn't the field in front of you. It's the light, it's the passion, it's the, you know, uh, one of my paintings in, in, in Easton, I had an aha moment. I was in, um, in Oxford. I think it was Oxford. I'm, I, Oxford. Yeah, I think it was in Oxford and I was painting on a little slip of, of land and I was just having a good time, but I was, I had been, you know, watching all these painters all week and some of them were people I'd idolized and seen in the magazines and I I'm like oh, I want to paint like like Mick McAndrews especially watercolors because I feel like watercolors are the poor stepchild of of plein air um uh, or plein air <laughs> events but not this year you know this no, year no we was, did have a big watercolor representation oh, well, I, because, I, I, I want to ask you a question my second question was about that is uh, the last week we, we we did we just talked to Mick McAndrews and I asked him the question did abstract art lead him into the watercolor medium? And you said it was an abstract painting that you had to go back to in Chicago to bring back to your, into your life because you had to see it again. And mm -hmm. I'm just curious, abstract, the closest thing to abstract art to me is the way watercolor hits the page when it first hits it. So it's about how the medium works, right? That to me is the thing. Yes, it's about, it's about, and, and I just did this whole thing with my students this week about what is the content of a painting. And beginners or intermediate people think the content of the painting is the cat or the person, you know? And I went through, I don't know if you were familiar with Serge Hollerback. Um, he just passed Ain't away no this year. He, <laughs> It's a cult sorry. reference, sorry. I, I, no, <laughs> he's a, he's a, um, a figurative painter, Good and name. there's a credible film about him. Uh, he had, I didn't realize this, toward the end of his life, he had immaculate degeneration. Oh, and wow. And it was a film of him painting. And um, two, two 
two different paintings like five years apart in the end he could hardly see but the way he applied paint and it wasn't watercolor but it could have been mm -hmm. you know because it really was about letting the paint do its thing and it was as much about the surface of the painting and the subject matter quote unquote the people which he paints a lot of in some ways was incidental you know uh, yes so i i totally agree with you the way the the paint hits the paper and i think that's what changed in my life too is that um, with oil painting, I paint very spontaneously also, but I think that's what changed in my life um, is that uh, I no longer had a control where I was going. Mm -hmm. I understood, I learned from watercolor that I had to look at where the watercolor was gonna take me and go there. I might have plans for the painting. Right. And uh, and, and I, I'm a big one on planning, but then I really, lose out if I don't pay attention to where it's taking me. That's awesome. That's I awesome. love that. I love that. That opens up a whole other, whole other pathway. I used to call them abstract landscapes. Right. And um, it's interesting because I actually sold <laughs> many, many years later, like 30 years later, I, I had them on a website just tucked in. I didn't even remember I had them. And I had a call from a hospital in Camden, New Jersey, saying uh, they wanted to buy some of my watercolors. And I said, great. You know, and they looked they asked if I made prints and what the price point was. And the next thing I know, like I didn't hear from them. And about three months later, I get an email from them saying we want to buy and there were three of these huge oil paintings <laughs> that I had in my oh, attic. That funny? So um, it was just funny. But yes, they, they tell me, they re remind me of my soul when I was young. And, and I had to do this round circuit to find that place again. Yep. Yep. I love that. Marilyn, I think we're going to uh, get ready to take a break right now because we can talk about a ton of questions we could ask you. Um, I know. That uh, we're going to come up in the next segment. Um so we've been talking with Marilyn Rose, uh, first time entry into Plenar Easton in 2022. Or yep. She loved it. Yep. And oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> we'll be right back with Plenar Easton Podcast in just one second. Hey, everyone. Producer of the podcast, Nick Richards here. We're so glad you've been enjoying our podcasts. We put a lot of love into creating them in hopes of building a more robust community around our festival. If you're interested in even more Plein Air Easton material, boy oh boy do I have news for you. If you head over to the Plein Air Easton YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Plein Air Easton, you'll find live streams of our festival events, including this year's award ceremony, time-lapse videos of Plein Air artists creating their beautiful masterpieces, as well as episodes of the podcast. We also have a series of instructional videos from competition artists and alumni, including Lori Putnam, Paul Botcham, Susan Lynn, Beth Bathe, Joe Gersick, and Master Joe Vuong. For $50, you can watch one of our incredible artists explain their techniques and artistic philosophies step by step. With views of the artist, the canvas, the palette, and the subject, you'll be able to observe the entire process. And your purchase includes unlimited replays, so you can watch the lesson over and over again. Later this year, we will be releasing more instructional videos with Thomas Bucci, Robert J. Simone, and Julie Riker. To check them out, visit vimeo.com slash avalonfoundation slash vod underscore pages. That's vimeo.com slash avalonfoundation slash vod underscore pages. All this additional content can keep you connected to the artists and offerings of the event. And we hope to see you next summer at Plein Air Easton. Mick McAndrews, um, in his interview, we kind of had, we ended up having a little bit of a discussion about painter versus artist. And I just heard mm -hmm. you refer to other, other, you know, your colleagues as painters. Is there, you know, do you prefer one term over the other? No, I think I think they're the same, except that I've gotten in trouble with painter a few times. Um, during a plein air, I, I asked someone if I, not in Easton, but if I could paint on their property, if I could paint their barn. And he said he had to call the owner. And then he talks to the owner and he says, yeah, I know it was just painted last year. <laughs> yeah. um, oh. You know, the house, <laughs> the house painter reference. Um, but no, I, I, I consider them kind of, 
interchangeably. I, I think um, maybe, maybe I think of painter as the action a little bit more. So like when I'm outside and I'm painting, mm -hmm. I, I think about that. Whereas, you know, in, in art school, you get really caught up with the idea of artist with a capital A and, and that really can stymie you. I mean, I think that's what what drove me away from painting or from art for so long. Well, it, because, is it because it's like big shoes to fill or, I mean, you know, it kind of like denotes respect and I don't know, in my mind it does a little bit. Like, she's saying, it, it she's was, saying it stymies them. What, what like do you it's mean? already professional. Well, you know or what you mean? think you're, you're already artist. there? You think you're there? Is that what you're no, talking about? No, I just think that that it it was, you know, like I, I remember the first time I had a business card paint, uh, printed up and, and the idea of putting artists on it, well, maybe it is that it, it's stymied, but it, it, you know, in art school, the conversation is always, is it art? You know, it's great, but is it art? Everything's art, isn't and it? Isn't it? Isn't, isn't everything art? Well, now I mean, I know that, but in college, in you know, when you're having these philosophical discussions, it's like, you well, know, we used to have we we had we had them at bars. We didn't have them in college necessarily, but we, you know, we were talking about art. Is it art? Is it art? Is it art? And you know, I mean, this was when I think that somebody was doing the exhibit of the Virgin Mary being urinated on in New York City. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't remember what that was or exactly, but it was like, it was it created a great discussion for is it art and right? Um, I think it was actually fecal matter, and and um, <sighs> yeah, I remember that. And and but it, but it's a philosophical discussion. So, you know, I I think there are a lot of things that are presented as art that are really a, a philosophical discussion and not about the quality of the piece, you know, and, and that's different True. than someone who immerses themselves in the making of the piece. You know, I mean, I mean, there are these people, um, you know, Jeff Coons or whatever with the balloon animals or whatever, he has studios and they cast them and everything else to me, you know, um, art, my definition of art, involves getting my hands dirty too, making something. It's a very primal thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but I don't think that when people talk about art, they're always talking about that. I think, I think art has so many connotations with different people, depending on who you're talking to. Right. Yeah. So I, That's... I don't know which, I, I don't take offense at any either term, but it's just a, a different take, I guess, mm -hmm. you know, I think Absolutely. art has connotations that painter doesn't, but it also elevates it, which is what you want, you know. Do you have any more artists so. or painter jokes like that little story you had at the beginning of this where the uh, guy, <laughs> one of those barn painted and he said, I know it's, but I just painted it last year. Any oh, more? I have <laughs> a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was She's a, a career painter in residence. Them. Another highlight of my career was, was I was a painter in residence in Bryant Park. And I went there every day. It was early in my plein air career. And I went there every day and I got a stipend and I painted for eight hours a day for for um, two weeks. And if it rained, you still painted or you had extended. I was going away afterwards. I, I didn't want to extend it. So I would go in and, you know, watercolor in the rain is a real challenge. <laughs> um, the irony is that I have won more awards for watercolor in the rain, um, which is funny, but huh. I think that, and, and a lot of my paintings have that rainy. In fact, I was thrilled. One of my competition pieces, the one of the Tillman Island Bridge um, was, uh, I think I called it safe Harbor and it was, I was going back and it was like, it's going to rain. Yes, it's going to rain. <laughs> gonna splash I've got a, a, a winner here. This is it. painted in the rain, but, um, but, but it's a real mixed thing. And so, um, I was in Bryant park and I had asked them, they had these really cool aprons that were very much like the plein air Easton aprons, but I didn't have a plein air Easton apron and they had these big pockets. So, um, I had, I had commandeered one. I had actually purchased one and I was wearing it and I went up to, I, I was thinking on the way in, where am I going to paint in the rain? And I thought, I know the carousel, it's covered. I'll go on the carousel. So I go up to the carousel and I said, I'm, I'm a paint. I'm one of the painters. This was my mistake. I'm one of the they <laughs> two, two, two plein air 
artists each summer. I said, I'm one of the painters. Um, I really want to see uh, maybe uh, I want to paint the horses. Can I, I, I want to, she said, Oh, just go on the carousel. I was going to paint. So I go on the carousel and I go around a few times and I realized it was a very bad idea. I was going to get deathly ill going around and painting. You know, I thought I'd sit <laughs> and that was really <laughs> foolhardy. So but anyway, so, so you were going to go around the carousel and stare at one object while it was moving around, right, is that, right. where everybody else can look around, and you don't get right, sick. Right, but the background moves. So <laughs> right, exactly. exactly. <laughs> so, but it was covered. So after that, when I got off the carousel, she said, "Oh, you're coming back because I'd left my stuff." She said, "You're going to go." I said, "No, I've decided. I'm. I, I took some photos, but I'm really not going to paint today." And she goes, "Well, they really do need a touch-up, you know, the horse's <laughs> nose." And so that was, you know, right. that's my. Idea. <laughs> that's great. That's really funny. So, the Marilyn, I, you, um, yeah. what are what what are you into now? You mentioned in the beginning that you are teaching. Tell us a little bit about your teaching. I do a lot of teaching, and I love teaching because I feel like it. I feel like when I'm teaching, I teach myself, and um, so I, I started reluctantly teaching. Um, when I first started painting and showing, people kept asking me to teach and do demos. And I teach for a, a semester, a, you know, a, a four session or a, a day workshop. I teach every year up in Vermont. I teach four days at the Land Grove Inn. I teach a plein air and regular. And uh, eventually my graphic design business, um, uh, for a while I was painting and doing graphic design. And then I, I couldn't do both and I couldn't hold both and and my passion was really toward the painting I had to make the but choice I, yeah I did and uh or the choice made me a little too um and right. anyway I I um set up a studio where my graphic design studio my house had been I have a teaching studio I used to teach in a gallery and it folded and I ended up teaching in my house as well as at the art school at Old Church in Demarest and uh and I was doing that I have eight students at a time and I'd been doing it for several years, the teaching I've been doing for longer, but in my home for several years when the um, pandemic hit. And uh, unfortunately, I had a student who passed away very early in the pandemic, oh, like I'm the sorry. first. Ugh. Yeah. And um, and so my students were kind of shell shocked. We're in a small space and everything else. And I'm like, I got to figure out how to do this. You know, and this was before people knew about Zoom. And I was up all night. Tape, I taped a camera to a step stool and put it up. I didn't know what I was doing, but I figured out how to do Zoom classes. Right. And and I found that um, at my graphic design skills served me well because I was able to. So the way I teach on Zoom is not like it's not a follow along. I do a a demo. I do a concept. I do a demo. And then I actually critique people's work because I take and put it up on the screen in Photoshop and can show them how things might be different or make decisions or whatever. But in choosing themes for my class, because I, it, it's different than an in-person class where people bring what they've been working on and, and continue to work on it. Um, I, I, try to get people to work independently during the week and send in their work but but I've explored different themes that I might not have and it's just been a really fascinating process to me to teach teach myself so I decide what I want to learn about in some ways or or put words to some of the things like when you were talking about the medium and how the medium uh I guess when I was talking about Serge Hollerback and about the the content and so uh, I think last week I did a class on the levels of, of a painting uh, the abstraction versus subject matter of my you know uh, safe harbor or or the other pa competition piece I did uh, I called um, throwing caution to the wind you know and and it was you know it was about the paint not about the it was about the place and and how the place or the time tied into the way i painted it and and those thoughts really um come to me in the teaching so it's just been a very symbiotic and and that's thing what you me. end up spreading to that that's what that's the message for that lesson or that class that you would yeah. whatever comes to you you're sort of passing on through to them is that is that what you're saying 
Yeah, and then and then it, it also then I de- I find I'm developing it, you know, on the easel. Right, yeah, you get um, yeah, you get you're getting the bon- you get the bonus and that you get the class money and then you get to learn yourself. That's really Shh, good. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm killing it over here. That's great. Uh, (laughs) Just an aside before we get going, we're going to wrap up in a few minutes here, but I want to apologize to Serge Hollerback, whoever that was. I just could not resist the... (laughs) I I don't know the gentleman. I don't know the gentleman. He he passed away, so... Oh, um, in spirit, He's no longer with us. Yes. I guess there really ain't no Hollerback. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, and but I'm bum, sorry bum, about it I, I, yeah, it's, just, it's terrible. It's really terrible. Um, uh, and there's another name question. Marilyn Rose, is that your real name? Is that your given name? It's a beautiful, beautiful name. Oh, you don't want to hear the story about that one. Yes, it is. <laughs> okay. Well, it's lovely. Uh, it's also, it. it uh, you may want to cut this, but um, no, a that quick means story. No, that I, means I, do I, not cut. <laughs> <laughs> what? what one of my sons was on a, a, a program abroad and I get a call at a very odd time of day. And I'm like, he's mom. I said, yeah, everything. Okay. And he said, yeah. And he said, a bunch of us were, I didn't know this was a verb Wikipediaing our parents to see who's famous. Right. And I go, honey, it's not me. He goes, you know, I said, yeah, there's a porn star named Marilyn Rose. <laughs> and when I, wow. <laughs> In the seventies, my first boss said to me, "Oh, there's a porn star near Marilyn Rose." So uh, my significant other always tells people, "Don't Google her name." <laughs> <laughs> so yes, it is my own name. So yes, <laughs> that's great. What a great porn name too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't even get to play that game. That's <laughs> right. Uh, What's your porn name? <laughs> well, actually. <laughs> Well, and there is in California named Marilyn Rose and oil paint. Every once in a while, I get a call for for saying I can't make your Tuesday class. I'll, I'll teach on. I'll come on Wednesday, and it's like wait a minute, I don't have it on Wednesday. Oh, it's from California. It's the wrong Marilyn Rose. <laughs> so there are a bunch of us out there. Do you think that there's a lot of Tim Wagons around? I, no, I don't think that. There, there's <laughs> there's a Tim Wagon who uh, rides motocross, who is actually like one of the top motocross. Uh, right. When uh, you Google your name, you'll so find those things out. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So when when I um, uh, ran my graphic design business in the early days, uh, I had an office in New York, but the calls would come into my home and and my kids knew the phone rang. We had one line. I picked it up and they didn't say a word. And I would answer Marilyn Rose Design. Well, I went camping with my kids and they have a different last name. I never took their father's name. And so when I knew there was something, I knew knew there was something. Yeah, they got. (laughs) <laughs> they got lost. One of them got lost on the campgrounds. And I'm like, oh, no. And I go and find him. And and um, he says to me, I said to him, did they ask you your name? And he goes, yes. And I said, did you tell him? And he says, yeah, Daniel Bookoff. And I'm like, okay. And I hear the name and I'm thinking, oh, I said, did you, they ask you your mommy's name? And he said, yes. And I said, what was that? What did you tell him? And he said, Marilyn Rose Design. <laughs> so they couldn't return them to me. So. That's great. That's great. Now, Mar- I was, did you did you not? Did, why did you not take your suitor's name? Is that the right question, person? Uh, it was my husband. Um, because book I, off is it book off? Yeah, but I'm not married to him anymore. Oh, oh, oh um, ooh, okay. Ooh. Okay. So that made that transition the easier. Part 30, of this. <laughs> it, it was a 30-year marriage, but but um, the reason I didn't was because I already had my name in print. I did a lot of, as a graphic designer, I did a lot of okay, um, gotcha, museum gotcha, books, gotcha, okay. art and stuff, and, and it was my name. It was already I started. It was want, already started. Yeah, right. I didn't want to change my identity. Got you it, were establishing it. your your career path and and that would have mm-hmm. just been yeah yeah I, I yeah that. confusing mm-hmm. so yeah. you want to do a speed round yes yeah, so we're gonna speed round speed here it comes uh-oh oh okay. all right rapid fire, rapid fire rapid fire all right Marilyn. first thing that comes to mind when i say overrated social media okay um what is one of your favorite movies of all time Ooh, movies um, crash. The the one in the, I think it's in the eighties. It's 
I, is that the, the one that the has all the different scenes and how they all like right. come together? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay. How they're all interrelated. Yep. Or sliding doors, another one like that. Oh my helps. gosh, you're speaking my love language. Ooh, ooh, I love here? sliding doors. What's that about? What's that I about? I love it. I so I love the whole concept of it. It's about like basically choices that you make in your life and what is that one pivotal moment where you made a choice that your life could have taken a completely different path if you had chosen the other thing. How do they how is that and it happens in painting every time you do something, Does especially it? in watercolor. How? Because you take one path and you've gotta commit to it. You gotta keep going. You know, you you muddle things if you second guess. You, you follow the paint oh. where the paint takes you. Is that what you're saying? Yes, exactly. So you have sliding door moments when you're when you're making art all the time. How old's the sliding door movie, Marie? Uh, it was Gwyneth Paltrow, and I don't remember the Sc- the old Scottish movie. guy. I haven't seen it in years. Yeah, I, I mean, years, I'm going to say, like, guess. early, early 90s. Like Our producers 91. are getting on that right now. Our producers are getting That's how quick we are around here. They're getting I know. on it right now. I know. Wow. <laughs> I have to watch it again because I haven't. Seen it. I just popped in my head. 1998. 98. 98. So long okay. ago. You guys are like, oh, it's such an old movie. <laughs> Shoot. I'm Last at the point century. in my life where, like, yesterday feels like a long <laughs> time ago. Century. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, exact, that's, that's, that's how it feels, Marilyn, right? It is. It is. Um, uh, a couple more speed round questions. Dessert or appetizers? What's your what's your pick? Either or. Ooh. Both. <laughs> Both. Uh, In that order. Dessert. 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 All right. Dessert over appetizers. You like dessert better. You're going to go with dessert. What yeah. is your... What about, um, what about the... Rock oysters Rockefeller for appetizer. Uh, what? I don't eat. Huh? I don't eat. Uh, I don't eat seafood. So. <laughs> oh, okay. What about uh, uh, um? Why are you trying to make her change her? I'm just trying to you know. Speed round she, she didn't seem to know, and then she was oh, like a, both. A good ahi like, tuna. A good ahi tuna. Okay. You know, I could go both ways. I'm telling you. You know, they're both very. Uh, oh, yeah. see, that was her gracious <laughs> way of saying that oysters are not her her. She jam. doesn't eat seafood. Not doesn't eat seafood. She eats tuna, but not oysters. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Did fun. you get that nuance <laughs> <Right. answer>? there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Marilyn, what is your next bucket list destination? Where are you planning and plotting to go next? Plenary Easton next year. <laughs> <laughs> Great answer. Great answer. If I had control over that, I, uh, I would um, definitely hmm. take that into consideration. I, I don't I don't know. I just did some bucket list things. So oh, I, nice. I did go on. Wow. What was I, your I favorite go recent bucket list trip? Uh, Galapagos and Iceland. No, wow. I mean they were, but but I just did Iceland this this last spring. Uh, uh, it was a COVID related trip that got canceled, and I ended up. Uh, we were going to a wedding in in England, and instead we were the first time I scheduled it, it was going to be England and the Netherlands, and then when we rescheduled, I scheduled England and Iceland, and it was amazing. Yeah, a lot so. of people have gone to Iceland. I know a lot of people, friends who have gone to Iceland. I, I guess it's, it was the rates at one point, and then the the buzz about. Well, it you just can got, get you can get like a three or four day hop. I don't even know if it's considered a hop. But yeah, you can get a three or four it, day for like four ninety nine with mean, your why, flight just, and a hotel. Come you know on, what why I mean? not just go on out there, see some yeah. northern lights, better than what's it's, on TV? Right? Well, no, I went in the summer, and so you don't see the northern lights in the summer. But what ah. you see is is um, the daylight. It's like it's my kind of place. It's like fifteen hours of day. No, like twenty hours of daylight. So you don't ever right. have to. Work worry about it getting dark. I needed that in plain air East. And, you know, <laughs> and, and, and what about the, uh, what was the, what was the essence of the Galapagos? To consider for next year. How can we make it light for 20 hours a day? <laughs> really? Really? Uh, no, but Galapagos. we wouldn't want to do that. We would want to make it like sunrise or like right, that, that right. golden but, but, sunset hour. That's for... what it is between like Nine o'clock and two in the morning is that golden sunrise. I wasn't painting there, but it would be, yeah, it, it's uh. that golden glow at, at that time. Um, uh, Galapagos was the, the wildlife was amazing. It was just 
fantastic. Well, I can't so. wait to see you again in person because I want to take notes on your Galapagos trip because that's definitely in my top. It's so it's like the romantic trip of the world or something. Top 10. Oh, email me because I went on a, a small boat and it was just amazing. What do you yeah. mean when you say yeah. the wildlife? What do you mean? Is there a oh, giraffe you, you, running so, around? So or? like hundred year old no, tortoises. No, there's no. There are no predators. So the birds, you walk on these islands and the birds and the penguins. And I mean, you walk literally right up to them. You're three feet away from the blue footed boobies and they don't move. They just no fear whatsoever. It's like and each island is different. It's very much like Iceland in some ways because some are lava and some are uh, there. They're such different places. You feel like you've landed on the moon. Um, but it was just amazing. Oh, really it inspired amazing. me. Yeah, like, that uh, sounds it like It moved heaven. up my list. Is that what it is? Yeah. That's the lore? Is it heaven where there's no predators for anybody? It, yeah, it's really, you know, and then and then at night you'd be on this boat going from island to island because they're, they're big distances, you know, and the gulls would, would be in the – in the jet stream, I guess not jet stream, whatever it is, the stream of they 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 like hop a ride onto the boat because uh. it's easier flying, you know, if they were uh, in the in the uh, I don't know what you call it the the wind yeah, no, the, the, the drag yeah the drag like the a race drag, car right. yeah yeah sure um, right. uh, Marie you got any more rapid fires or uh, I got one for you what is the best sandwich oh uh, a Mediterranean wrap. Mm, okay, there we go. Nice, yes. nice. Haven't heard that before. Good. Meditate, meditate, or grilled right. cheese. Or grilled, grilled cheese. Grilled cheese will bring. <laughs> grilled cheese will bring me back to my childhood. But, there you go. You know. Yeah. Are you tomato soup so. or no? Grilled cheese yes, and tomato absolutely. soup. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. On. And the grilled cheese is on rye bread. Oh. Grilled cheese and tomato on rye bread. Right. All Next right. to all the flavors. All right. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> all right, Marilyn. This has been great. Nick, uh, thank you. This is. I think we we didn't have to you, cut any of your uhs or anything like that. Marie, uh, Marilyn, you sounded great. I know you really. You okay? We, yeah, you're you're a seasoned pro, yeah, Marilyn. You want to do a podcast? Well, you know, <laughs> the thing is that I talk to my students on Zoom all the time, right? So so I forget that you're not live. You know, <laughs> I mean, I I've gotten very accustomed to that zoom thing right. and that the, the electronic world. It's, it, it was my lifesaver for three years, you well, know? Well, listen, so. Marilyn, Marilyn's you can go on her website, Marilyn Rose. I was looking at her paintings. Marilyn, I really love No, it's Marilyn Rose art. Right. Marilyn Rose art.com. If you type it in or <laughs> don't Wikipedia it, whatever you do, um, but, uh, no, you can't. You can at this point. I think that her career is over and mine is not. Um, but, but We're going to leave that one alone, Marilyn. We're going to leave that one alone. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> I, I really love this painting, Honk. I love Honk, and I love uh, um, my my favorite pair. They're both really, really, if you get a chance to look at Marilyn's uh, oh. work. Um, and, um, I, I would say, Mary, you, she's going to, you, you got to apply again for this year. Hopefully I think Joe Wang is going to like this. I think master Joe Wang is going to love this style. Well, of he liked her style so much. He, he, uh, un, invited her as a, as a competition artist this year. So, right. Exactly. So you get in and I'm sure you're going to, you know, um, I'm glad you sold uh, so many paintings this year. That's a great inspiration for everybody who's listening. It took her a long time to get in seven times. She said, but she made all that money back in one year, right? That's right. This could be your year. So don't give up. Don't forget to apply. When is the deadline for applying to Plenary Eastern? December 1st, we will start accepting applications to apply for Plenary Eastern 2023. And that uh, window will be open until about mid January. December 1st or mid January. Yes. Yep. And and then you'll be getting emails and stuff about us uh, from us uh, if you're on our list. But hop on those lists if you want to at plenaryeastern.com, right? Plenaryeastern.com. Yep, easy, easy, easy process. And we'll like lay it out for you and stuff. So. Marilyn, thank you very much. It's been a great time talking to you. Thank you. It's been wonderful. Awesome, Marilyn. Take care. This is Plenary Eastern Podcast. Thank you very much for listening. The Plenary Eastern Podcast is brought to you by the Avalon Foundation and was produced by Nick Richards. Our theme music was generously provided by Blue Dot Sessions with additional episode music by Poddington Bear. Remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. You can learn more about Plan Air Easton at planaireaston.com.